Welcome to the Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, theastrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox. And on tonight's show, I'm going to be talking about the planets this month. And this month, I mean November. Because November starts in just a few days' time on Thursday, if you can believe that. So there's a lot of planetary activity going on in November. So tonight's show, I'm going to be talking about what we can be expecting and also talk about uh, what each sign can be expecting in November. So the big news of the month, the really big news of the month, is that lucky planet Jupiter is moving into its favorite sign of Sagittarius. Warrior planet Mars is moving into gentle Pisces, so that combination is not uh, not as flowing. And we also have, finally, love planet Venus will be turning direct, and that's direct in Libra on November 16th. Uh, and also on November 16th, we have the dreaded Mercury retrograde, which is upon us again, which typically happens uh, three times per year. And so this will be the final Mercury retrograde of 2018. Yay. Uh, so that will be occurring in Sagittarius and Scorpio. So I'll be talking about all of these influences and what they mean and how they affect each sign. But really, the first week of November does start out really nicely. So it's the end of this week, beginning of next week. We have two incredible trines, and a trine is uh, really, um, it's a really easy energy, it's a flowing energy and the first trine is between Jupiter and Chiron and then uh, we've got the Sun and Neptune. So these these um, these planets with these trines represent compassion, sincerity, trust, guidance, protection. Uh, also in November we've got uh, a new moon in Scorpio that's happening on the 7th and that is occurring at 15 degrees Scorpio uh, so this will mean that human Scorpio is all about healing and transformation uh, and we can channel um, positive energy through this new moon in Scorpio uh, we also have Uranus planet of the unexpected uh, that will be retrograding continuing its retrograde motion and that goes back into Aries and that's on November 6th. And so uh, we're nearly at the very, very end of the Uranus in Aries cycle, which is once every 84 years. So we will just have these last few uh, touches of uh, Uranus in Aries, and then in March it will finally uh, stay in Taurus uh, for the next seven, eight years. So uh, if you are born at the end, very end of Aries, 
uh, this is very potent energy for you. Uh, so that's Uranus retrograding back into Aries on November 6th, where it will be for a few months. Uh, so what that means for all of us is that uh, some attitudes may be an unexpected, uh, some unexpected events, and uh, people may be coming a little bit regressive, even dogmatic when Uranus retrogrades back into Aries. So on to Jupiter. Uh, so Jupiter is arriving in Sagittarius uh, for the first time in nearly 12 years and that's happening on November 8th. Now Jupiter is the planet of hope, positivity, optimism, generosity, expansion, luck, optimism and it's with its ruling, uh, it's the ruler of Sagittarius. So this is really a doubly good news because these two energies really like each other. And Jupiter uh, is not only a planet of expansion and luck and optimism, but Sagittarius is the sign of travel, higher learning, <clears throat> excuse me, adventure, philanthropy, and really just sort of like broadening our horizons. So considering that we've been through a lot of heavy, intense energy in 2018, uh, Jupiter in moving into Sagittarius really does bring a breath of fresh air. <clears throat> and it offers, you know, a welcome wave of positive energy and optimism and hope. And, um, you know, it's a philosophical type of energy. So we can move outside of our uh, focusing on the small stuff and really look at things from a bigger point of view. It's also uh, representative of foreign cultures and customs and places and traditions. Uh, and so another change, as I mentioned before, is on November 15th, uh, we have warrior planet Mars moving into gentle Pisces. So this is interesting energy. It's, it's, it's contradictory energies in some ways. Uh, because, you know, Mars is all about action and assertion, whereas Pisces is very much about, um, it's, it's a sensitive energy, it's an intuitive energy. So when these two come together, it'd be a good time to focus on um, any sort of spiritual pursuits or putting, you know, we've always wanted to study or review a certain, uh, say we want to get into meditation or yoga, it's a really good time to sort of put those plans into action. Uh, and I will talk about in just a moment uh, when M Mars and Jupiter are battling it out with a square. Uh, so that happens, um, just, just looking through my calendar here, oh, here it is, on November 19th. November 19th, we've got uh, Mars forming a square to Jupiter. Both just move into their new signs and they immediately immediately battle it out. So Mars has been a bit like that. I mean, the energy of Mars is like that anyway because Mars is the planet of um, assertion and aggression. And uh, it's really been battling uh, the other planets this year. And the first one that comes to mind is Uranus, planet of the unexpected. Uh, Mars moved in on, uh, when was it, May 15th, Mars moved into Aquarius and Uranus moved into Taurus and they immediately were duking it out all throughout the Northern Hemisphere summer. Mars is doing it again uh, on November 19th, but this time in a different sign and with a different planet, which is Jupiter in Sagittarius. So any time that Mars and Jupiter um, come together through a hard aspect like a square or an opposition. It's all about competition. Uh, and it's interesting because Jupiter in Sagittarius is about foreign influences. Uh, so that's sort of thrown into the mix of this Mars-Jupiter square, which is about competition. Um, but it's not very, it's not going to be very direct because Mars is not in, in an aggressive sign. It's, it's going to be in Pisces, which is very, a very, uh, soft and gentle sign. It doesn't go too well with Mars, which is very much the warrior energy. So competition will be, um, maybe indirect or competition might not be what we expect it to be, uh, typically when Mars is in Pisces. So anyway, Jupiter will be entering Sagittarius 
on November 8th, uh, where it will be through December 2019. Uh, Jupiter typically stays in one sign for about a year and it goes through the cycle or through the zodiac uh, just under 12 years. So Jupiter is the natural ruler of Sagittarius. And this is really great news if you have any planets in fire signs, uh, specifically Sagittarius, uh, and you will find that Jupiter will be, uh, will have the Midas touch on your fire planets, and the fire planets are Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And if you don't know where your planets are, go to my website, get a free chart wheel, uh, theastrologer.com slash chart wheel. And then you can follow along each week uh, to, to um, when I talk about where the planets are each week or each month and how they're affecting you well beyond your sun sign. So Jupiter is the natural ruler of Sagittarius. And if you are a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sag, or have any planets in fire signs, this is great news for you. Jupiter is known as the planet of luck and good fortune. And so uh, because it's going to be in Sagittarius, where it is just at home, it will express itself in its most pure form. So Jupiter is a planet of expansion, luck, hope, optimism, foreign places, uh, higher learning. Uh, and Sagittarius, of course, is a sign of travel, adventure, um, philosophy. And so um, it's very much about um, broadening our horizons. So many of us might be very busy, you know, with lots of things on the go, uh, especially if we have any sort of fire energy that uh, we're just um, not, it's not necessarily about juggling too many balls in the air, but it's really like having a focus on one particular thing because uh, Sagittarius and Jupiter, they really like to focus on one thing uh, and be very good at one particular topic or, or to master a particular topic. Uh, so that's, um, that's something that many of us can do is just take a step back and, you know, focus on what we're really good at or focus on what we're really interested in. Um, I'm just whizzing here through the calendar to take a look and see what else is happening uh, as soon as Jupiter moves into Sagittarius. I mentioned the square to Mars uh, on not November 19th. Uh, and then I'm looking here. Yeah, the second half of November, uh, what's happening is um, it, it, it gets a little bit interesting, not just because of that square on the 19th, but the Sun, Mercury, Retrograde, and Jupiter all square Mars and Neptune in Pisces. Uh, so Jupiter makes something look uh, look more likely, but it, it exaggerates the energy that surrounds it. Um, it will emphasize or, yeah, as I said, uh, amplify or exaggerate things on the flip side. Uh, so because... Jupiter will be together with, uh, let me have a look here, with the Mercury retrograde and more so uh, at the end of November, and that's like the 27th here. Yeah, on the 27th, we've got um, Mercury retrograde forming a conjunction to Jupiter. Take care at that time uh, when it comes to storytelling, exaggeration, um, even marketing or PR. There might be some backlash there. Uh, and I'm saying that because of the Mercury retrograde, uh, which occurs on November 16th um, all the way through, let me see here, all the way back into Scorpio and then um, all the way through December 6th, uh, we will have this Mercury retrograde in Scorpio and then, of course, in Sagittarius. And it comes together with Jupiter and then both form this square to warrior planet Mars and then nebulous Neptune, uh, uh, both Mars and Neptune being in Pisces. So things are very, because these signs of Sagittarius and Pisces are mutable, the energy will be very sort of wishy-washy. Things will be very confusing. Um, and I'm talking the last uh, couple of weeks of November so it would be very much about, um, you know, wanting to put plans into action but not being able to make stuff happen. 
uh, and that's because of the Mars planet of action and uh, Neptune is the planet of confusion uh, when it's in a hard aspect. So it's like there'll be exaggeration or there'll be um, excessive confusion about action. Um, it's, it's a good use for uh, brainstorming, but of course, uh, a lot of this, a lot of a lot of people won't be grounded um, because of this this type of energy with the Sun Mercury retrograde in Jupiter forming a challenging square to Mars and Neptune. So this is second half of November. It's like things are confusing. We might have to redo something, but we're not clear about what it is we're, we're redoing or reviewing. Uh, so just take care with that sort of energy uh, because Jupiter is a planet that really does exaggerate or exacerbate things that it that it comes into contact with. Um, you know, so Jupiter will like amplify the heart and explosive and maybe risky edges of the Sun and Mars when it forms that square. Um, and it's a lot about competition, which I talked about before. Uh, Mars, When Mars and Jupiter come together, it's about competition, especially with hard aspects. So, um, you know, it could even be explosive or dangerous. Um, and, you know, there could be deception there because of the Mercury retrograde and, you know, the involvement of Neptune. Um, so some people will be looking for that escapism, um, but really don't take anything at face value, especially if you're a um, if you're a mutable sign, uh, more so, and that's Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Uh, it's going to be really important that um, you don't take anything at face value. Get everything checked. Um, because things might not be what they seem with that second half, uh, the second half in November. Uh, and so with the Jupiter forming that square to Mars in Pisces on the 19th, um, it's unlike many other Mars squares um, because it won't feel like urgent or as irritating because Mars is quite subdued in Pisces. Uh, so that's coming about in November as well. So, um, you know, there could be some unconscious enthusiasm for expanding our minds and experiencing new things, uh, which might lead people to embrace more than what they have in the past. Um, but, you know, some people might be more likely to think of themselves and or, or where they come from or their nation. Uh, maybe it's being invincible, and that's that Jupiter in uh, Sagittarius energy. Uh, and, you know, the Mars in Pisces is not really seeing things clearly. So on that note, we're going to take a short break, so stay tuned, and I will continue with November's planets. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ohmtimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. 
Thanks for listening to Om Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine, Paul Avgerinos, A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer Kelly Fox talking about the planets this month, and that is November. Uh, November starts on Thursday. We have November 1st on Thursday. And the big news of November is, or for November, is Jupiter, planet of expansion, moving into its favorite sign of Sagittarius where it will be until December 2019. Uh, so this is really big news, and it's actually one of the headlines of 2018 is uh, optimistic, hopeful, expansive Jupiter uh, moving into its favourite sign of Sagittarius. This is great news if you're a fire sign, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. Uh, lots of expansion and generosity and good things coming your way. Or if you have any planets in fire signs, this is great news. Uh, on the flip side, though, is that uh, Jupiter can also um, be responsible for excess. So uh, it's really about finding a balance. So anything that could be excessive, uh, Jupiter will get the blame for. And that's especially if you're a mutable sign, uh, Gemini, Virgo, uh, Sagittarius or Pisces, but particularly Gemini and Virgo. So just before the break, I was talking about uh, Jupiter and, and what it's going to be doing uh, specifically in November uh, and what connections it makes to the other planets. And so on November 19th, uh, Jupiter will be forming a square to um, uh, action planet Mars. So I was saying this one's not as intense because Mars will be moving into Pisces. So these are the two very different energies, Mars and Pisces, uh, when it comes together. But I, I said probably the best use of Mars and Pisces would be any sort of spiritual pursuit. Uh, and also Jupiter in Sagittarius. Jupiter is a very philosophical energy, uh, especially when it's in Sagittarius. So this will be a time when we're looking at a situation from a higher point of view, uh, maybe embracing other people's uh, cultures and customs, perhaps. Uh, good time for Thanksgiving, you know, what, what are we thankful for? People will be very sort of connected to their ethnicity or their nation or their patriotism uh, with these types of energies. Um, but, you know, we need to be careful around um, around the 19th of November because some of us might be taking on more than we can handle or we might get more than what we bargained for, uh, especially when it comes to foreigners or foreign relations, uh, that type of thing. Um, and let's not just sort of jump into something without paying attention to the detail. That could sort of catch up to us as well because Jupiter in Sagittarius uh, uh, getting hit by a square from Mars in Pisces there's nothing in there that's about detail or paying attention to the small stuff. It's sort of like taking a leap of faith, uh, but we should be checking things first before we do that, especially with a Mercury retrograde uh, coming about on November 16th. So it's like be very careful with detail the second half of November. Uh, now, Jupiter will also be making a conjunction to the Sun uh, on November 25th. And so this is um, this is really big energy because um, it's a very expansive, hopeful, optimistic sort of energy. 
But of course, it is being weighed down a bit by Mars and Neptune, uh, which sort of does create uh, confusion. But basically, when the Sun comes together with Jupiter, it's very much, it's a very generous energy, um, experienced, generous type of energy. You know, some, some of us are feeling larger than life. Uh, and the competition, you know, from Mars, uh, well, could, you know, it's fierce but friendly. Uh, so it's like many of us want to learn more about the world and what's out there, you know, specifically uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius through, you know, a whole year through the end of 2019. So it's like many of us, um, especially, you know, the fire signs, fiery energies, will be wanting to uh, explore more of the world, will be traveling or, you know, and if, if you um, and if you don't have the ability to travel uh, now through next year, then even learning or watching travel shows or learning about um, different places, even trying um, for foreign cuisines is a really good use of this energy of Jupiter in Sagittarius. Now Jupiter conjuncts Mercury retrograde on November 27th. And so um, this is very much about or, or should be about self-reflection. Uh, but, you know, because it's Mercury retrograde coming together with Jupiter, uh, there's still that, that level of enthusiasm and, you know, nothing can harm me type of attitude. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily put a damper on things so much as it creates a, a greater desire to think and rethink our ideas, especially our philosophical ideals, our religions or our ideologies. And um, we think, that, you know, that might be too dear to question. Well, now is the time to reevaluate what we believe to be true. So this is around November 27th, you know, when Mercury retrograde comes together with uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius. So it's not so much a revolution, but it's more about a re-examining um, of what we thought was true. So I think that's more about what that energy with the Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius coming together with um, Jupiter in Sagittarius is about. Uh, so, you know, Jupiter in Sagittarius, you know, it's a, it's a breath of fresh air or a burst of fire, breathing enthusiasm. So it's pure expression without fear or without deception, although, of course, the involvement of Neptune does change that. Um, so it's sort of like it, it, it might be time just Jupiter in Sagittarius alone um, that, you know, the world had an extra dose of unadorned honesty and a renewed thirst for adventure and exploration. Uh, you know, people opening up their borders, tearing down their walls, you know, like we are we are joined, you know, like the world is getting to be smaller and smaller thanks to technology, but it's like uh now is not the time to sort of um put up walls and and not be connected. You know, Jupiter Jupiter in Sagittarius wants to explore and, and know. Um it's a very uh it's a very curious uh type of energy. Now just a bit, bit, little bit about Jupiter. So Jupiter moving into Sagittarius, that's the big news of November. And Jupiter is referred to as a planet of luck because it brings opportunities and advantages. Uh, and so it's, it's like um, it can bring many opportunities in certain areas of our life, uh, all areas of our life, depending on how this transit affects your natal chart, what house will uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius be in in your natal chart um, but you know Jupiter is about learning and intellectual pursuits and uh, spirituality you know and, and in short it's like the expansion of our soul it's like how do we broaden our horizons and not just physically but it's like emotionally and intellectually and psychically so it's like uh, Jupiter, you know, it, it is known as the planet of luck and good fortune, um, but it wants to know, like, not just how you enjoy the spoils of your good luck, but it, it wants to look for the deeper meaning of something, you know, because Jupiter in Sagittarius is very much about the philosopher or the seeker. So it's like we're seeking to understand, we're seeking the deeper meaning. Now, with this Mercury, because Mercury's planet of the mind in Sagittarius, uh, and it's going to be retrograde, but it also retrogrades back into Scorpio as part of this retrograde cycle. 
Uh, and so, you know, Mercury, planet of the mind in Scorpio, the sign of the truth or or deeper meanings. Um, so it's it's going to be interesting, you know, late November, early December, um, you know, like when we we can get to, the, we can really get to the bottom of something that might have been um, quite, uh, well, let's say that's the truth has been avoiding us and we really want to get to the bottom of something. So that's very much about Mercury in um, Scorpio and Jupiter in Sagittarius because both those energies, uh, Sagittarius and Scorpio, are very much uh, truth seekers, but in, in different ways, but really both those signs are see, always seeking the truth, always looking for the truth. Um, and so with Jupiter, you know, with Jupiter in Sagittarius, um, it's like we're going to graduate to higher levels of understanding within the universe, within our world. So it's like we're going to be looking at situations from a higher point of view or from a different point of view. Um, we're they're going to be very philosophical. Um, that's the gift of uh, Sagittarius and then, of course, Jupiter, its ruling planet uh, in its sign. Now, on the flip side, of course, because with astrology, everything does have a flip side. Uh, so nothing, nothing's ever like a garden of roses. There's always the thorns. Um, so with um, Jupiter in Sagittarius, it's going to be about keeping a sense of humility or restraint. Uh, so it's like, uh, because it can be very, um, what's the word, amplified. The energy of Jupiter is very amplified. It, it amplifies or makes bigger anything that it touches. So it's like, um, so it's, it's about excess on the flip side. So, so take care with excess. So, you know, if you're the type to party now and pay later, well, you'll have a great time with that, but it will definitely uh, catch up to you, no matter what that may be. Retail therapy, the credit card bill comes in, and oh, no, look what's happened. So it's like, you know, on the flip side of this energy of Jupiter in Sagittarius, it's very much about, um, you know, pay now or pay later. So um, that's the flip side of it. So... You know, and as I said, Jupiter is uh, the ruler of Sagittarius and it's actually the ancient ruler of Pisces. The modern day ruler of Pisces is Neptune. So Sagittarius, of course, you know, we're, we're in the season of Scorpio, but we're now starting to look uh, come November when the sun moves into Sagittarius on November 21st. You know, we're, uh, we're looking... Um, at the season of Sagittarius and all things Sagittarius and what that means. Excuse me, November 22nd, the sun moves into Sagittarius, not the 21st. So, um, you know, Sagittarius, you know, its symbol is the archer, it's the truth seeker of the zodiac. It wants to broaden its horizons, um, you know, far reaching, definitely far reaching, idealistic, you know, it's a mutable fire sign. So you put that together with Jupiter, the planet of expansion. And so things things can change, um, you know, there's no fixed sort of way of doing or being, um, you know, and Sagittarius is definitely happy-go-lucky um, and, um, you know, Sagittarius is all about having memorable experiences and creating opportunities and going with the flow and if something's not working, move on to the next thing. Um, you know, and, and Jupiter in Sagittarius, this energy is really good um, for teaching and learning. And, you know, typically Sagittarius has a reputation as, as a lifelong student and teacher and adventurer. And so it's really all about getting out into the world and understanding um, different cultures and different experiences. Uh, and it's it's not about routine. That's going to be the big thing as well. So Jupiter in Sagittarius through all the way through December 2019, it's not about routine. It's about uh, being spontaneous and um, sort of taking things as they come. So, uh, you know, 2018 really has all been all about um, a lot of fixed energy and the fixed signs of Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. So it's been very much the past couple of years actually has been a lot of fixed energy. So now with this Jupiter moving into Sagittarius this month, it's very much about, um, you know, sort of a go with the flow type of energy, especially with, you know, Mars and uh, Neptune, 
uh, both in Pisces, which is, which is a mutable sign, and then we've got the Sun and Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius. So we've got a lot of mutable energy uh, in November. So there's a lot of like things can change. So it's sort of like um, it's it's not so much about expect the unexpected, but it's sort of like more about go with the flow. Um, let's not hang on to things too much because they could just change at a moment's notice with all this mutable energy going on. And of course, as I said, we've got Mercury turning retrograde November 16th through December 6th. And so uh, Mercury retrograde, especially in Sagittarius, um, I always think of inserting one's foot into one's mouth uh, really is the way to put it. It's sort of like things can get blurted out without a second thought. So, uh, you know, we're not paying attention to any detail with all this sort of uh, mutable energy in Pisces and Sagittarius and, it's, and also Uranus in Aries as well. So it's sort of like, you know, most, people will not be thinking things through. Uh, we're just sort of like diving into things as they happen uh, and, you know, grabbing every opportunity that might come our way as well because there will be some unexpected opportunities that um, might arise from work that we've put in previously with that Uranus in Aries retrograde. So it's the work we've put in previously we might have thought had been completely dormant and not not really coming to life again. Things might be just cropping up all around us. And again, especially if you are in a uh, fire sign, Aries, Leo and Sagittarius, um, a lot of energy uh, for the fire signs at the moment. You know, so with, with Uranus uh, moving back into Aries to really complete the cycle that it started in uh you know, 2011, uh, when Uranus, unpredictable Uranus, first moved into Aries, uh, and and you know, Uranus, the cycle of Uranus is every 84 years, and it stays in a sign for about seven years. So, uh, well, okay. On that note, we will take a short break. So stay tuned, and I will continue with this month's planet. Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, the inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ran inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life, a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com, M-E-T-T-A, mindfulnessmusic.com. I can't believe he found them. He seems sorry. We very clearly told him not to look up there. I'm honestly impressed that he was able to do it. Right? But if he balance on that big chair? Or... Yeah, I mean, I guess he'll just know what his gifts are this year. I really thought we had hidden them well. If they can find their presence, they can find a gun. 911, what is your emergency? Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and N Family Fire.
Hi there. Welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer Kelly Fox talking about the planets in November. The headline is Jupiter moving into Sagittarius where it will be until December 2019. We also have unpredictable Uranus moving retrograde back into Aries until March 6th. And it first moved into Aries in this cycle in March 2011. And so this is a time for um, things coming. It's sort of like things coming back to us from the past we had not anticipated. And that's especially if you were born at the very end of Aries, Leo or Sagittarius. Uh, And also November 15th, we have warrior planet Mars moving into gentle Pisces. So it will be clashing with uh, Jupiter in Sagittarius. Uh, Also on November 16th, we have uh, love planet Venus finally turning direct. It has been retrograde in Scorpio and Libra since October 5th. So this is really good news. Uh, Venus is the planet of love and money. And then on November 24th, we have nebulous Neptune turning direct in Pisces. Now, this is really not such a big deal when the outer planets change direction. But if you were born in the middle of a mutable sign, then this is news for you. And that's Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius or Pisces uh, with uh, Neptune, which is a planet of creativity and spirituality. But on the flip side, it's also the planet of confusion and deception. So on November 24th, uh, Neptune finally turns uh, direct in Pisces. It has been retrograde for the past few months. Now I'm going to move on to your monthly horoscope and what each sign can expect in November. So if you're in Aries, it's really it's going to be really important this month uh, that you um, are not caught up in the blame game. Uh, And that's because uh, the first week does offer chances for you to heal and forgive others. But because Uranus, planet of the unexpected, retrogrades uh, back into your sign, you actually may struggle to forgive yourself for something you did previously. Uh, But just remember, um, you know, don't blame yourself. It's vital that you really do remember that. um, Otherwise, that's taking on way too much. Uh, There's a really uh, powerful emotional new moon on November 7th uh, and so that's an opportunity to let go of the negative feelings once and for all. But the good news is, uh, you know, the arrival of Jupiter in Sagittarius in your adventure zone uh, for the next year. So it's it's a perfect time to sort of plan any sort of trips or classes or courses. It's a really great uh, time for sports or pursuing uh, any sort of anything outdoors in a really big way. And then, of course, your ruling planet Mars shifts into your spiritual zone. Uh, so you may feel an urge to undertake some sort of pilgrimage or spiritual journey of some kind uh, during November and then December. It could be quite life-changing for you. And then, of course, the full moon on the 22nd uh, encourages you to get in touch with long-lost friends or relatives. Uh, But with that very fortunate Sun-Jupiter conjunction on the 25th, that will highlight a travel opportunity which will be extremely rewarding. If you are a Taurus, uh, you must be able to feel the love this month uh, in November uh, because this month, November gets off to a really loving and romantic start for, for the ball. Uh, Jupiter, Chiron, Sun, Neptune all play their part in turning friends into lovers. And if you're single, um, that is, of course, and then if you are coupled, uh, then you get a complete reboot or refresh in your existing relationship. Uh, and so if you are dating, though, watch out for someone who is not what they seem. Um, so it's be, it's important to sort of have two feet grounded in reality this month. And so then, of course, with Jupiter arriving in Sagittarius, um, this signifies like the beginning of a much more emotionally open period of time. So it's, it'll be a time when you'll be able to share your feelings and express Uh, whatever ails you, and then um, sort of look to focus on your health and and getting stronger on on all levels, emotional, physical, etc. And then Mars shifting into your friendship zone. Um, So this will be 
help you feel more connected and part of society. And it's a fantastic time for making new friends and seeking out new company. Um, just take care with jealousy, though, on the 19th, uh, especially in a social circle. Um, someone might feel like you're ignoring them, so um, just just try and find that balance. And then the full moon on, on the 22nd is very passionate and intimate for you, so you'll feel closer than ever to the people that matter to you the most. If you are a Gemini, uh, work look, looks set to be interesting and rewarding as the month starts out. Um, there's some really great trines I talked about at the very beginning of the show between Jupiter and Chiron and the Sun and Neptune. So this is this, this brings you uh, much more creative ways to showcase your abilities um, and then you should get recognition um, that you deserve uh, beginning of November. Uh, you know, teamwork could be a little bit tricky on the 6th uh, when Uranus retrogrades back into um, this zone of your chart. But things uh, are looking positive and progressive uh, in your life uh, for November. And then, uh, you know, once Mars arrives in your career zone, there's very little which can stand in your way. Uh, and also good news on the personal front because, you know, Jupiter is arriving in your love zone uh, on November 8th through uh, 20, the end of 2019. This is the first time in nearly 12 years. <laughs> so this is really great news, Gemini. Uh, get out there and mix and mingle, regardless if you're single or coupled. Uh, now, back, back to work, though. Around November 19th, watch out for a brief conflict between your working life and your love life. Uh, make sure that your work life doesn't encroach uh, into your family time. And that's with that Mars squared Jupiter. Uh, so try to be realistic and don't overpromise. And then, of course, the full moon in your own sign on November 22nd uh, puts you back in your best form. And then, of course, uh, November 25th, that very, very fortunate Sun-Jupiter conjunction, uh, this happens in your love zone. So it's a fantastic time for making a romantic commitment. If you are a Cancer, uh, this could be a very adventurous start to November for you, um, you know, with your creativity, your can-do attitude, uh, are both at a high the first week of the month. And then, of course, those incredible trines, Jupiter, Chiron, and then Sun and Neptune, encourage you to expand your horizons um, and explore new sites and think new thoughts. And then the new moon on uh, November 7th is in your play zone. So there's a lot of joyful, youthful, flirtatious energy there for you. Uh, because, you know, November 8th onwards, um, there's a lot of thought for you around work and responsibilities. Um, but with, you know, Jupiter, you know, changing signs, um, you'll feel a new sense of satisfaction and pride in, in what you do. Uh, and even if you don't like your job, um, or wish you didn't have so many family duties. Um, you know, there is a, an optimistic feeling uh, once Jupiter moves into Sag on the 8th. Uh, and then, and also, you know, mid-month, uh, the travel bug might bite, um, especially when uh, action planet Mars arrives in your travel zone on November 15th. So it's like even if you can't physically travel, uh, take this as more as an impetus to expand your mental horizons. So growing and learning and exploring new cultures perhaps um, will bring you huge insight um, during this time. Uh, so whatever it is you're doing, you know, the end of November uh, will definitely be uplifting and bright and, you know, there's a full moon in your spiritual zone which points to um, progress with increasing your intuition um, and any sort of psychic ability you may have. Uh, and then, of course, this incredible Sun-Jupiter conjunction on the 25th uh, highlights some good news. So, Leo, uh, so family, family, family. So, this is what it's going to be uh, for many Leos in November. Um, is navigating any sort of family difficulties, uh, you know, about past hurts or resentments. Um, they're always sort of like bubbling beneath the surface. Um, but really, November is an I ideal time to um, sort of heal and bring peace to any sort of family conflicts uh, that you may have. 
especially, you know, the very beginning of November, um, you know, being helped by those trines that I've mentioned for the other signs. And then, you know, the new moon in your family zone um, on the 7th uh, is very helpful as well for healing. And then, of course, the arrival of Jupiter in Sagittarius in your play zone uh, on the 8th and then Mars shifting into your passion zone on the 15th. It's sort of like... Um, you know, and, and of course, with the Mercury retrograde, it's like righting wrongs uh, using humor and playfulness is one way to take it. But watch out um, for sort of your own showmanship on the 19th because of that Mars Jupiter square. It's very important that you don't over promise and under deliver. Um, and if you know, if you are single, you might be swept off your feet with that Sun Jupiter uh, conjunction uh, on the 25th. And then the full moon energies on the 22nd, um, don't take any sort of romance too seriously at that time. Um, it might be good, but um, just sort of like if you're looking for something more deep and memorable, uh, that might come a little bit later. If you are a Virgo, um, November begins with a, a very welcome first aid for a relationship, which has definitely been through the wars. And that's because of these two really nice healing trines between Jupiter and Chiron and then the Sun and Neptune. Uh, they will provide the balm and uh, reassurance for you and your partner. Communicating about your feelings gets a lot easier. Uh, and the more you can communicate, the easier it is to forgive and forget. And then, um, you know, Uranus retrogrades back into your blame zone on the 6th. So that could potentially stir up past hurts and grudges. Uh, so it's important that you just hang on to those good feelings and re and just keep communication open. Um, but there is a new moon on the 7th, um, so it does show the way forward and to be able to make ch the changes that you seek. And then, of course, family family life will take a priority mid-month uh, because Ju Jupiter will arrive in your family zone for the first time in nearly 12 years. And then, you know, Mars moving into your love zone uh, on the 15th. Uh, so that adds passion and determination to stay strong. Uh, so just watch out for any sort of interference from relatives around the 19th uh, and don't take anything too seriously or too personally. Uh, so the full moon on the 22nd um, hints that there's improved stability in your life and, of course, that extremely fortunate Sun-Jupiter conjunction in your family zone, your family zone, your home zone on the 25th um, uh, really shows how, how much support your family can give you. Or if you're looking to make a move, that would be the time to do it or redecorate or um, revamp your home space. If you are a Libra, uh, then for you uh, in November, uh, it's all about health and well-being. Uh, it's the time to turn over a new leaf, value your health. Um, use this energy to balance your emotions, your mental health, uh, start positive new habits. Uh, and then the new moon on the 7th falls in your money zone. So, um, you know, there should be uh, new news about uh, on the financial front. And then Jupiter arrives in your communication zone on the 8th. Uh, so it might, you might feel like you want to get back in, in touch with long-lost friends, reach out to siblings or cousins, neighbours even. Uh, you might be at your sociable best for the next few months with Jupiter, the influence of Jupiter. And then Mars arriving in your health zone in November, uh, you will be feeling uh, driven to improve your health even more so. Take care, though, for misunderstandings around the 16th through the 19th, Mercury retrograde in your communication zone, you know, Mars squaring Jupiter. It's sort of like it gets a bit too competitive at this time with this sort of um, with these sort of influences. And then the full moon um, on the 22nd encourages you to open your mind to new learning, and then of course um, starting a new group, uh, excuse me, starting a new course of study or a study group of some kind. If you are a Scorpio, November is a month for breaking all the rules and beating the odds. So um, there's a lot of healing, compassionate vibes. Uh, that are shining down on you. Uh, and there's no more hiding or conforming to what society will expect of you. You're feeling a lot more comfortable in your own skin. Uh, the new moon in your sign is a turning point for you, you know, new beginnings in your life. Jupiter, planet of um, luck, arrives in your finance zone for the next year. 
So, um, you know, finances are looking on the up and up. Um, but just don't be don't be too reckless or careless with your money. Uh, it's particularly around the 19th uh, with that Mars Jupiter square warns of overspending or gambling or financial carelessness. Uh, but the sun will move into your finance zone on the 22nd, the same day as the full moon. So again, it's it's a really good month for uh, spending, not spending, for saving, spending. Well, spending if you have it, saving, investing, or making your resources work for you. If you are a Sagittarius, um, this is uh, again the early part of the month. Is a great time for healing any sort of trauma. Um, and so don't allow uh, bad memories to sort of have any more power over you. And, um, you know, the new moon around the 7th is great for tuning into your intuition. And then, of course, really lucky because your ruling planet, planet of luck, moves into your sign where it will be through the end of 2019. Anything you touch will turn to gold. Lucky you. Uh, and then, of course, there's a blessed full moon in your love zone on the 22nd. And then, of course, the Sun-Jupiter conjunction on the 25th. Ah, oh, the world is smiling, Sagittarius. Capricorn, the friendship in your social circle, a key the first week in November. Uh, this is a chance to heal any sort of misunderstandings from the past. And then there's a new moon in your friendship zone. Uh, so that's quite good for you as well. Oh, no, we're out of time and I did not get to finish. Um, go to the On Time website to find out more about your monthly horoscope. But Aquarius, financial pressures are set to ease as November gets underway. And Pisces, finally for you in November, uh, the first part is um, a philosophical interlude for you. So that's it from me. This is The Astrology Show. I'm your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, wishing you a great week. Be sure to tune in next week.